Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another video. In this video I will be talking about an important design consideration when it comes to building projects and that is the selection of windows. Specifically, an important question is how do we know that our selection of windows for a particular building project is appropriate? This is what we will be attempting to understand together in this video. Let's get started. So some of the learning outcomes for uh, this video, uh, number one, I'm going to be talking about what the structure of a window looks like. Number two, I'll be talking about the functions of a window in a building. Number three, I'll be describing to you the differences between single glazing and double glazing windows. Um, and then number four, uh, We'll also be talking about certain parameters that need to be assessed when it comes to window selection. And finally, I'll briefly touch upon this uh, topic of low E glass and what it means. So starting off with some uh, general points to consider when it comes to selecting uh, appropriate windows for your building project, you need to make sure that whatever design decision you take in terms of uh, selecting a particular window, uh, it has to be suited to the local climate and conditions. You also have to consider the impacts of the window on the operational energy of the building. When I say operational energy, what I mean is um, the amount of electricity, for instance, and the amount of heating and cooling that will be utilized uh, by the building and the cost that will uh, be expended in order to operate the building. Now, windows have a significant role to play when it comes to determining the operational cost of a building. And this is something that we uh, have to understand, of course, it's going to help us in determining an appropriate and an optimized selection of windows to make sure that we reduce the operating energy of the building. We also need to consider the occupant's comfort. So people that will be utilizing the building, we need to make sure that they're comfortable. Um, and that's another important aspect to consider when selecting a windows for projects. Uh, you'd be uh, probably amazed to know that windows have a huge contribution in terms of energy losses in a building. They're actually one of the most significant uh, elements of design that impact uh, energy loss. So if you do uh, make the right selection from the start, you manage to control that issue of energy loss in a building. So moving on uh, to the structure of a window. What is a typical window composed of? You can think of four main components of uh, any window. So number one, you have your glass panes. Uh, if you've got double glaze, of course, you've got, you will have uh, several glass panes. If you, if you have a single, uh, a single glazing window, then it's just one single pane that you will have. Uh, the other aspect of the structure of the window is the frame. The third aspect is the rail and seals. And then the fourth aspect of the structure of a window are the spaces in the cases where you have double glazing. Now the frame comes in different materials. So you have windows where the frame is made of uh, vinyl. Uh, you have frames that are made of wood. Uh, fiberglass is another um, common material and also aluminium. So the best window to choose or the best design of a window to have is one that ensures the comfort of the occupant as I had previously explained but at the same time you need to make sure that the operational energy of the building is maintained at a low level and that's how you save on the operational cost of the building. What another aspect that you would probably need to consider as well is minimizing the environmental impact, the negative environmental impact off the the window so you'd be looking at uh, environmentally friendly material when it comes to selecting uh, windows for your uh, project 
In terms of the uh, functions of Windows in, in buildings, there are several important functions. Of course, uh, number one is daylight. So the amount of lighting that gets into the building through the window, uh, that's an important aspect, specifically if you're trying to rely less on artificial lighting. Number two is views, um, for the uh, mainly for the occupants. Uh, number three is the heat that is gained through the window or in some instances lost uh, through the window. Uh, the fourth uh, function of the window is ventilation purposes. And then finally, uh, glare. And that's an issue that we try to minimize uh, to occupants, just to make sure that uh, they're uh, comfortable inside the building. So these were uh, the five main uh, functions of a window and it's good to have uh, these functions in the back of your mind when selecting an appropriate uh, window for your for your building now in terms of the difference between single and double glazing windows if we start if we start by looking at single glazing um, single glazing window is uh, a single pane glass and you can see that in the image in front of you uh, and that thickness of, of the glass ranges between 3 to 10 mil approximately. For double glazing, you've got two panes now of glass. And between the two panes of glass, there's vacuum. And a vacuum is achieved by filling the space between the glass panes with a very dense uh, gas. Uh, uh, and it's usually argon. Um, so that's for double glazing. And then you have... You can also have triple glazing, and that's basically three uh, panes of glass and then insulation in the form of that dense dense uh, gas between between them. The advantages of having double glazing is the fact that you get more insulation, so less chance of heat escaping uh, from the building or less chance of heat actually coming into your building, and that's important in summer, say, for instance. Uh, the other advantage is uh, acoustic performance. So if you've got double glazing or triple glazing, then these windows have better acoustic performance compared to your single glazing window. As I said at the start of the video, there are several parameters that you need to consider when it comes to selecting appropriate windows for your building. Now, the first parameter that we will be having a look at is known as SHGC. What does that stand for? Basically, it's a uh, solar heat gain coefficient. Um, and if we were to define that, then it's a measure that's calculated as the ratio of transmitted and absorbed solar radiation to the incident solar radiation on the window. Remember, it's a ratio. So you take the uh, transmitted and absorbed solar radiation versus the incident, the total incident solar radiation onto the window. Now, the value that you get ranges between zero to one. So that's how the measure um, is. Um, and you can also think of it as indicating a percentage. So that SHGC measure indicates a percentage of solar heat radiation that makes it through the window. Now, a lower value indicates that there's less solar heat that's allowed into the building. So um, in certain uh, you know, conditions, so for instance, uh, if you're in, in summer, you would want less of that solar heat into the building. And as such, windows that have a low SHGC value would be better for you. In cold climates, it's the other way around. So if I've got if I've got a, a solar heat gain coefficient of one, that implies that there's a hundred percent of solar radiation that goes through the window into the building. The measure depends on the full window. So we're talking about the glass and the frame around it, but it's mostly the glass that contributes uh, to the measure. The second parameter that we will be talking about is the U value. 
of the window. Now, this is uh, a measure that looks at the rate of transfer of heat across the window. Uh, and you calculate that by um, sort of dividing the rate of transfer of heat uh, by the difference in temperature between the inside and the outside. Um, so you take the window and then the difference in temperature on both sides of the window. It's uh, a measure of the non-solar heat gain or loss uh, through the window into the building um, or vice versa, where you have uh, heat that's uh, lost from the building, say in cold climates, and you want to retain that. So it's an in, it's a it's an important sort of consideration to to have in mind, uh, and it's mostly driven due to the differences in temperature between the inside and the outside of the building. When you calculate the U value of a window, you need to consider the full structure of the window. So you have to look at the glass, you have to look at the frame, you have to look at the seals, and you have to look at any spaces if you've got double glazing or triple glazing. In terms of how uh, this value is measured, it's measured in watts per meter squared per degree Kelvin. Um, so unlike our previous uh, parameter or our previous measure, solar heat gain coefficient, which was between zero and one, uh, this is not sort of bound by these two values. Now, in Australia, typically your windows would have a U value between 2 to 10, approximately. And when, when it comes to U value, the lower the value, the better it is for your building. So there's less heating and air conditioning that would be required in the building. The third... Um, measure that I want to talk to you about is uh, visible transmittance. Now this uh, value, what it does is it measures the amount of light in the visible uh, portion of the spectrum that passes through a glazing material. So how much light comes in to the building through the window. And we're considering direct light and indirect light as well. So any reflected uh, light, which is going to be considered as indirect light, this is part of the uh, the calculation for the visible transmittance of a window. The value again is between zero and one, so it's similar to the uh, solar heat gain coefficient. It's between zero and one. If you get a value of one, so if your VT value is equal to one, then this means that all the light comes in through the window. Consider a case where you have tinted glass versus clear glass. The VT value for tinted glass is going to be lower than the VT value for the clear glass. The VT measure is important because when your VT is high, then it means that there's more light that comes into the building, more natural light. And as such, there's less reliance on artificial lights and hence you save on operating cost of the building. So these were uh, the three main measures to look at when it comes to selecting appropriate windows for your building. The final aspect that I want to talk about in this video relates to this concept of low e-glass. What does low e-glass mean? Low e-glass is um, a term that's used to describe low emissivity glass. And uh, this is usually uh, windows where the glass has a thin microscopic uh, metallic layer that's attached to one surface of the glass. And it's used to restrict the access of long wave energy through the window. Uh, so it reduces the amount of heat gain in the building. Now, light is short wave, it's not long wave. Uh, so light can pass through, but any long wave sort of uh, energy would be restricted. So an example of a long wave would be uh, infrared uh, from, from, the, from the sun. Um, and because infrared cannot pass through, that's what's responsible for the heat gain. You're less likely to experience uh, heat gain inside 
the building and so you can maintain it at a cool temperature. How does uh, low ear glass function across uh, various seasons? You can think of it this way. Heat would be stopped from entering the building in hot days and in cold days, heat would be stopped from escaping the building. So this sort of a technique, uh, the use of low E glass is very effective for single glazing windows. Now it can also be used for double or triple glazing windows. So in this video, I discussed a number of aspects that relate to um, window choice, um, some design parameters and some uh, measures to calculate in order to make sure that you achieve uh, an appropriate selection of windows. I do hope that this video helped explain uh, the selection process and some of the main aspects that we look at when it comes to uh, window choice. Um, if you did enjoy the video, do uh, press the like button, please. Um, and I'll see you in another video. Cheers.